Hi students, uh, I am Dr. Siddharth Sethi, your pediatrics consultant. I am a pediatric nephrologist by profession. What I'll do over the next few minutes, I'll talk about the questions which we asked on pediatrics in your grand test. The first question was, what is the investigation of choice for periventricular leukomalacia? For periventricular leukomalacia, remember, whenever a preterm gets an asphyxial insult, the injury which classically occurs in a preterm like on your left is a normal MRI of a brain and on your right is a preterm who got asphyxia. Now the injury which occurs is classically periventricular white matter injury. Can you see? On your left there is more white matter around the ventricles. On your right there is less white matter around the ventricles. So remember they classically get a periventricular insult to their brain. Okay? So this is called positive of the white matter shrinking of the ventricle is called PVL in preterms and later in life they get a spastic diplegia type of cerebral palsy spastic diplegia and in fact this question came in your neat PG 2019 that because the upper limbs are strong the lower limbs are weak diplegia means upper limbs are strong lower limbs are weak and tone is increased in the lower limbs so remember they have a seizuring gait this question came in neat PG Caesaring gait is seen in spastic cerebral palsy. Now on the other hand friends, remember that a term baby, this is an MRI of a term baby. This is a coronal section and can you see this injury, the parasagital area? Can you see this injury? So this is classically seen in terms, you see a parasagital injury. Okay, so remember in term babies, the injury to the brain is parasagittal and later in their life they get a spastic quadriplegic type of cerebral palsy. So later in life term babies get a spastic quadriplegia type of cerebral palsy. Okay? So remember this. So of course the answer to this question was MRI. So the answer to this question was diffusion variant MRI, the third option. Okay, coming to the next question. Uh, this question is very important because in every exam of yours, you'll get a question on Sarnath and Sarnath staging of HIE. Isoelectric EEG is seen in which stage of HIE? So remember, number one, the most common cause of seizure in a newborn is HIE. Okay, the most common cause of seizure in a newborn is HIE. Secondly, the drug of choice for seizure in a newborn is phenobarbiton. The drug of choice for seizure in a newborn is phenobarbiton. And thirdly, the most common type of seizure in a newborn is subtle. So remember, the most common type of seizure in a newborn is subtle. Now remember that we classify all the stages of HIE. Okay, so remember the staging of HIE, there is a classification to it. And this staging was given by two doctors their name was Sarnath and Sarnath okay don't don't worry this is just like normal CNS examination we'll just do that with you in stage one this child is hyper alert so remember in stage one this child is hyper alert okay hyper alert Moros is strong pupils show midriasis it has a good prognosis. So remember in the Sarnath and Sarnath staging which came way back in 1976, it gives a staging of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in newborns. Stage 1 has a very good prognosis. Now all of you in the class, the most important stage for you is stage 2. In stage 2 this child is lethargic, moros is weak, pupils show meiosis and remember Clinical seizures are seen in HIE stage 2. So this is a very important question for all of you. Clinical seizures are seen in HIE stage 2. Okay. Now stage 3 is deep coma. So we asked you uh, in which condition do you see isoelectric EEG. So remember stage 3 has a very bad prognosis. So stage 3 has a very bad prognosis and here you can see in stage 3 there is a burst separation EEG or a isoelectric EEG. All of them are decerebrate posturing. It has a very bad prognosis. They're comatose. Pupils are dilated. Okay. 
So this stage three has a very bad prognosis. So very important. Let's take you to the next question. So isoelectric EEG is seen in stage three. Let's take you to the next question. So the answer to this question was stage three. Now remember that in preterms we avoid hyperoxia. Hyperoxia causes retrolental fibroplasia. So remember, according to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare 2016, almost 19 to 22 percent of blindness in children is because of ROP, retinopathy of prematurity. So we should not have, we don't need to have 100 percent oxygen. So remember, the oxygen target according to WHO for preterms is 91 to 95 percent only. You don't need to have hyperoxia in preterm.